I never do these types of commentary style videos, but I had to for the one time because this upcoming video that I'm about to share with y'all just embodies the spirit of the car buying climate we've all been a part of these last few years since really 2020. I was actually planning to release another video related to the subject of astronomically high car prices, but then CBS yesterday released this video and I wanted to talk about it because it just provides such good supplementary information for this same subject. First of all, allegedly 15% or about 1 in 6 car buyers are now paying over $1,000. That's right, $1,000 a month for a car. I'm just going to roll the clip so you guys can see real quick. I believe it was right about here. One in six people who have recently financed a new car committed to monthly payments of $1,000 or more. The yeah. And this research was done in partnership with Edmunds. And the scary part is, <clears throat> excuse me, that some of these, I'll call them financially illiterate people, aren't even buying high-end cars. And now, I hate to pick on the guy that I'm about to show you in this video because he might be an upstanding person all around when it comes to replacing his EcoBoost Mustang, but he just fits the framework of an irresponsible consumer all too well. So let me roll the clip for you guys just to see. Demetrius Thrasher depends on his vehicle to make food deliveries just outside Atlanta. After a crash totaled his previous car last summer, the Navy veteran reluctantly purchased a new one for about $25,000 more than he wanted to spend. I called around to the other dealerships throughout the state of Georgia and they were like, we got nothing. Thrasher says he's now paying about $1,000 a month for his car and has had to defer payments twice. He's not a Okay, so first things first, I'm going to call out the obvious. Monthly payment aside for a second, look, I'm sorry he had his car totaled, and thank God he appears to be physically well. It looks like somebody had rear-ended him, but if he was looking for a replacement, I'm going to keep it a buck fifty with y'all. Uh, why in God's name would he think spending not a few thousand more, not even $10,000 more, but $25,000 more to replace his EcoBoost with what looks like a Mustang GT? to be a financially sound decision? Like, how is that financially sound? I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt, but holy cow, you mean to tell me the entire state of Georgia didn't have an EcoBoost Mustang? Damn, that's actually wild, bro. Still, if money was tight, and evidently it was because he deferred payments for two months at the time of this video, why didn't he just temporarily downgrade to something a bit more manageable for the time being, right? Like, I mean, Let's be brutally honest here for a minute. Nobody needs a Mustang to deliver food. And to keep it real with y'all, I had one. My brother had one. They're not fuel efficient or cheap to insure. So I know for a fact he's not profiting as much as he could off those food deliveries. And with that GT, you bet your ass you're spending more for gas and your insurance is definitely, most definitely higher. To call it as I see it, having been to Atlanta a dozen times to see family and hearing all the stories from my friends and brother, a car culture there is more about stunting what you have at whatever the cost. The city is infamous for having people drive around their Mopars with 20 plus percent APR. Look, nobody cares if you have a Mustang or not. Because at the end of the day, you drive that thing off the streets of Atlanta and park that baby in your garage or parking spot, right? Only you are left holding the bag. Okay, so that aside, let's assume he did, in fact, need a Mustang, right? You might say, well, CBS did say he depends on food delivery, that food delivery job to make his living. Maybe he needed that Mustang as soon as possible. Okay, okay. Well, here's a suggestion. How about instead of getting ripped off by $25,000 in the state of Georgia, you could look outside Georgia and maybe have a car delivered to you. Having shipped vehicles three times across the country like literally from texas to arizona was my last one i can tell you it cost me less than one thousand dollars each time i recall the last time i paid was 895 dollars to transport my camaro ss for about a thousand miles and before y'all give me some crap about the risks of transporting cars across the country relax how do you think your car got to the dealership lot to begin with Hiring reputable haulers when sure your brand new baby will be in tip top shape and usually especially if you negotiate as part of your buying process, the dealership or seller will be held 100% liable for any damages caused while your car was being transported. So the risk here would be minimal if at all. The only caveat that I can see would be that 
he wouldn't be able to see the car in person before purchasing, but seeing as he wanted a replacement Mustang anyways, he'd already know what he was getting himself into, so I see no harm in buying out of state, and registration out of state, I mean, you just do it yourself. You could they, The dealership sells the car to you, and you just register it within your state. It's not that complicated, but again, he implied he needed the car as soon as possible for food deliveries. Okay, to add to my recommendation of buying out of state, hopefully for cheaper than Georgia, he should have rented a car for however long it would take until that Mustang from across the country would arrive. In a hypothetical, even if he were to stretch the purchasing process and registration for, say, well over a month, renting an economy car for food deliveries plus that new car shipment would undoubtedly still be less than paying a whopping 25 bands more. See, I'm going to lay out the honest to God truth about his situation. Unfortunately, he is not solely a victim of circumstance because I'm going to assume he has all the resources readily available to him. After all, he got approved for a $1,000 a month car payment, so he has to probably be making a decent living. Obviously, a smartphone to coordinate food deliveries, etc. More specifically, he's a victim of emotional purchasing or impulsive buying behavior, as some psychologists would call it. Look, I get it. In stressful situations, we may not be thinking 100% rationally, I've been there. Sometimes you just need a little bit of that post-nut clarity, right? I'm there with you to a point. However, if he spent that time calling around and searching across Georgia for another Mustang, he definitely had the time to at least think of other alternatives and or solutions, I would, you know, I would hope. The only possible excuse he could maybe have was that my recommendations aren't that convenient for him, to which my response would be like, all right. So let me get this straight. For about a month's worth of inconvenience at most, if you're slow about it, you're willing to forego that and lose $25,000, which in the short and long term, sets you back however months of rent or mortgage, however many months of potentially lost vacations or experiences, however many months or years of financial instability. And no world is that trade-off worth it to me. Personally, I'd take that little bit of inconvenience if it meant saving 20 bands or more and also give me financial peace of mind month over month over month with a lower car payment on top of all that I've mentioned. So to recap, option one, he should have looked for a cheaper alternative or car. This is the obvious answer and hella convenient seeing as Atlanta would definitely have a plethora of other options for him to choose. Option two, would have been just to, if you really needed that Mustang, buy out of state. It's easier than most people would think. It's not a lot of paperwork. And temporarily, he could have rented a car to go alongside that. There's car rental services specifically for food delivery, like DoorDash has it. I know Instacart, there's Hertz, etc. It would still save him, again, easily 20 Gs. And he'd still be rocking his Mustang, albeit it would probably be the EcoBoost like his original, which wasn't that the supposed goal anyway. Either way, circling back to that crazy thousand a month payment for his uh, Mustang, irrespective of the term agreement, whether it was 36 months, 48, 60, 72, 84, 96, whatever the case may be, he's still getting behind on his payments. That ain't right. When did we as a society get comfortable with being so much in bad debt? Like, there's good debt, don't get me wrong, but even if he were to try to use mental gymnastics and say his Mustang GT would be good for tax deductions, it wouldn't because he could only legally deduct the business miles used for said food deliveries. I'm going to assume he has this car for personal use as well, so he can't fully deduct a car in its entirety. Specifically, he would need to drive his Mustang over 20,000 miles a year for solely business just to overcome the standard deduction on taxes to actually take a meaningful benefit of sorts. Even so, the dude's still paying a thousand a month for a depreciating item he could have easily avoided. To all you thinking about being financially reckless, listen, spoil yourself from time to time, but don't ruin yourself month over month. Alrighty, that wraps up this video. I'm, am I just being unreasonable or is this current car buying climate actually insane? Let me know your thoughts down below or if you've heard similar stories to the one that was mentioned here on CBS's video. I'll catch you all soon. Until next time, peace.